On the 14th December 2006, the 10th and 11th episodes of season 3 of The Office aired on NBC. The episode's premise was that Michael Scott's girlfriend at the time, Carol, decided to break up with him after he sent out Christmas cards of himself and her with her kids with his face imposed over that of her ex-husband's. So to help Michael get over Carol, Andy invites him to Asian Hooters or Benihana, a hibachi style restaurant. Andy himself is a commentary on how lonely entitled men think that all customer service workers, but specifically women, are hitting on him without realizing that's literally their job. Dwight and Jim go with them and hijinks ensue. Jim and Dwight are particularly funny at the restaurant as we get to see them interact with the world outside of the office. Andy starts hitting on the hostess who is of course nice to him as that's her job but when he tries to invite her to the office Christmas party she declines. However later in the episode we see how Andy and Michael have acquired dates to other Asian women who we learn later are actually teenagers. The rest of the episode focuses on on how Michael can't tell his date from Andy's as all Asian people look the same. But there's actually another side to this gag, which is that these two Asian girls are supposed to be the uglier versions of the waitress and her friend. As the actress Kat Ahn, who played Andy's date Amy, stated in 2021, the storyline with myself and the other Asian American actress is that we were the uglier versions of the actresses at the Benihana. And as someone who is Asian American and a fan of The Office, these two episodes are ones that I usually skip. It was always awkward watching these two because the joke was that all Asian people look the same and that's honestly, in my opinion, so old and annoying, not to mention racist. And also because I don't look like Cindy, the first more attractive waitress, I look more like the two uglier waitresses. And it's annoying how this show written by white writers, Jennifer Coletta wrote this particular two-part episode back in 2006, these writers subtly enforced Asian beauty standards. Of course, that wasn't their intention and maybe even the intention was for us to laugh at how ridiculous Michael is being. Not to mention, maybe the joke is that they're just too drunk and didn't even notice that they brought home the wrong waitresses. But there is still the visual gag for the audience, that is, these darker skinned, smaller eyed, larger and shorter Asian women are uglier than the beautiful, more even skinned, thinner women at the restaurant. And isn't it funny that Michael and Andy could only score these two underage, darker skinned girls? Though to be fair, none of the women have extremely light skin, and even one of the more attractive waitresses at the restaurant has tanner skin. But I do think that the writers, either knowingly or unknowingly, played into already established East Asian beauty standards when it came to casting the uglier actresses. They picked women with a larger build, smaller eyes, acne, darker skin in comparison to the prettier actresses because that's what ugly Asian people look like to white people and also to Asian people, unfortunately. We've also internalized this narrative that to be ugly as an Asian person is to have small eyes and tan skin, even though a lot of Asian people have tan skin and small eyes. And a lot of it is because today we live in a globalized world where white people dictate what's beautiful as we're all subjected to Hollywood's soft power and influence, not to mention anti-blackness within East Asian countries and an overall aversion to darker skinned peers. Whether it be historically or because of global white hegemony through cultural imperialism, it's safe to say that within East Asia today, darker skinned people aren't viewed in the best light and these white writers have mimicked what a lot of East Asian people have already internalized about themselves. As an East Asian woman with tanner skin, harsher facial features, and a large face in general, I really dislike how part of the joke is that these women are uglier versions of the other waitresses, and I think if you're not Asian and aware of these beauty standards, you might miss that about the episode. That it's not just that Asian people all look the same, but also that these Asian women are unattractive. Additionally, I think it's important to point out how in countries like the US, some East Asian models and celebrities are considered beautiful here specifically for their smaller, more dramatic eyes and harsher bone structure, but in the countries where they're from or where their families are from, those features are undesirable. For example, Ho Yun from Squid Game, though is famous in South Korea, doesn't fit in with the expected beauty standard compared to Won Young or Taeyeon or IU, for example. And though there can be different types of beauty, it's clear that one is championed over the other. The same with Lucy Liu, who's an American actress, but the East Asian American beauty standards she represents of having harsher features, freckles, etc. isn't what's considered beautiful in China, where her parents are from, but is what the casting agents found to be exotic about her. I think the disparity in what the US finds beautiful in East Asian people versus the actual beauty standards in East Asia itself comes from the fact that in non-Asian countries, emphasizing more drastic features in high fashion and acting shows how different Asian people can look 
compared to white people. It's exotic, foreign, and other, not to mention the East Asian beauty standard of pale skin, small faces, and large eyes can be a bit too foreign. So it's just more comfortable for white and non-Asian audiences to see what an East Asian person is supposed to look like, according to white people, than according to East Asian people. In the US, white people expect people of other races to be darker than them, to be brown essentially, to be non-white literally. And those are the types of East Asian people who are given more visibility because they fit into white people's expectation of the racial other, while pale East Asian people with circle lenses and dyed hair don't. And whether these Asian American actors are cast as desirable or undesirable is up to the writers and producers. In all, it's interesting to me how this Office episode actually enforces this East Asian beauty hierarchy of features even though it was written by white writers. Like the white writers knew that darker skinned, smaller eyed Asian people are ugly not only to white people but to Asian people themselves and knew that lighter skinned Cindy with larger eyes is more beautiful. I don't know, just something to think about. I'm not saying that The Office is a horrible show, that you're a horrible person for liking it or that it needs to be canceled, but rather how this impacts fans of the show who are East Asian and the actors themselves. How it not only impacted people at the time it aired, but people now who are still watching and who are still fans, me included. I personally love The Office. It's one of the few shows I've watched multiple times and quote daily out of context. And so I just want to emphasize that it's not that the times were different. It was wrong then and it was wrong now. And I think that we should reflect on it. When reflecting on this episode in the Office Ladies podcast, Angela Kinsey said, I just don't think the storyline would have been written today. And I don't know, I just hate how discussions about past wrongs usually devolve into that this couldn't be made today rather than talk about the implications of the media that it had at the time and now. In 2020, Steve Carell sat down with Brian Baumgarten and said this about The Office being made today. If it were to come back, it would evolve. I think the writing would be a bit different in today's climate, but I don't think it would be any less insightful. I don't think it would be any less smart or any less funny. It would just be different. If it were to come back, it would evolve. I think the writing would be a bit different in today's climate, but I don't think it would be any less insightful, smart, or funny. It would just be different. It's easy to say, you can't be funny or do comedy in this day and age. I think that's a cop-out. And here Steve is correcting what he said back in 2015 about how The Office couldn't be made today because people take things too literally. And he did correct himself here, and I agree that it could be made today and still be funny, but I'm just honestly sick and tired of these remakes. But actually, there's an Office reboot coming out sometime in the future future, unfortunately. However, according to Screen Rant, it won't be a true reboot. Greg Daniels, the creator of The Office, is not interested in rebooting the sitcom with new characters, as he believes the original story had closure and the best cast ever. Instead, Daniels envisions a new show in the same universe as The Office, similar to how The Mandalorian exists in the Star Wars universe. So that's what we have for now. I personally am fine with enjoying The Office for what it is and skipping over the episodes that piss me off. And in the end, I'm personally sick of reboots, but that's just me. Anyway, this isn't to make you feel bad for liking The Office as I, again, love The Office, but just another layer to an episode that wasn't the best and why. I hope you have a happy holiday season and I'll see you next year. Thanks so much for watching and let me know what you thought of this video and The Office and my thoughts down below and have a happy new year. Thanks for watching. Bye.